what to look for when mixing with the spectrum analyzer, the what the how, bear with me. In simple terms, using tools like a spectrum analyzer can help you balance out your music. In the ideal world, we listen to a great sounding space and our ears are trained to understand what we're listening to, right? But there's a whole bunch of tools like the classic frequency analyzer to aid you. Now, there will be some comment that goes, but you should balance using only your ears because that's what the Grammy artists do. All right, Mr. Smarty, why do all these main large studios have dedicated visual monitors or even a dedicated monitor that's just dedicated to a frequency analyzer? Hmm? Answer me that. Also, it's a really bloody good way to learn. Does it sound right to your ears? Does it then look right and correlate on a frequency analyzer? If you think you're hearing it just right and it sounds great to your reference, but they're miles apart on the frequency analyzer, well, you know that there's maybe an issue with your room, but more importantly, you're not picking that up with your knowledge of how to mix and how that works. Now, most DAWs, they have some kind of frequency analyzer built into them. Oddly enough, in Logic, the best one's actually built into the EQ, whereas the metering system's a little harder to read. But there is a great free option called Voxengo Span or Voxengo Frequency Analyzer. If you don't have one, I'd recommend using that. I'm gonna use a couple of other options that I already have, but they essentially all do roughly the same thing. And the principle is going to work either way. So just make sure you've got some kind of frequency analyzer to use. Today's tutorial is sponsored by DistroKid. They're a digital music distributor aimed at getting your music on all the digital platforms. Check out the description below to get a discount on distributing your music today. We're looking at a spectrogram here. And across the bottom, we've got our frequency going from 20 hertz right the way through to 20 kilohertz, which is generally the full range of human hearing. On the right hand side, we've got zero dB right at the top here, all the way down to minus 120 dB. That's more than full range in most DAWs. Imagine for just a moment, that the spectrogram shows sound pressure level instead of decibels. Up at the top, we've got 130, and in the middle range, we've got 80. Sound pressure level is another way of measuring how loud the sound is and how we hear. I'll link a resource below if you want to learn more about Pascals and things like that. If we apply the frequency and the sound pressure level to how we hear, we end up with a curve that looks a little bit like this. And this was found by researching how people hear at different sound levels. It shows us that to perceive a low end sound, there needs to be a high sound pressure level. Whereas to experience a sound around the one to two, three K region, depending on the person, we don't need nearly as much pressure and we dip off somewhat in the mid ranges. With this information, we can apply it to how we hear music in, in terms of a flat spectrum. This is kind of what mixing to a profile is like. So we can use a spectrogram like this to ensure that we've got roughly this kind of balance. Now, obviously all music varies and mix vary but we can use this as a guide to at a quick glance understand if something is inherently outbalanced. Now in a track like this example here which is covering the full spectrum we can see this slope and yes there are peaks and there are dips as the music changes and evolves. But in general, we can see that Fletcher Munson curve. And the track itself sounds balanced and we can hear all of the elements. Now we can put two spectrums side by side and use that as a rough guide to see what's going on with our own track. However, a tool that I think is very, very useful, and there are other options out there, is Melder's multi-analyzer. What you can do here is put it on multiple instances of, what you can do here is put it in multiple places on your track and see the spectrograph for that element. So I can put a muted reference track in here and I can see its output relative to mine. If I turn mine off, I can play my track, but see the reference track, which is Pendulum Plastic World. And then 
overlay my mix onto that. And I can see comparatively that they're in a similar kind of space. And obviously the audio moves, you know, there's different notes playing, there's a vocal prominent in my track so it might stick out more in other places. But at a glance we can see that I've got no extreme low end, whereas this track goes down a little bit lower. I mean, you can also see that this has consistently got more high end than I have. And with that bit of information, I could look to maybe correct that in line with the reference profile just here. So if I just bring up the channel EQ, we can see that it's probably going down somewhere in the 3K region. So we could, very simply, do a lift like this. And this brings it more in line with the reference. Yeah, so it's dull by comparison. And just from that little bit of information, I'm able to improve the overall track. The reference we have loaded up here is called a pink noise reference. Pink noise is a weighted balance of white noise. So white noise is all frequencies at the same amplitude, whereas pink noise has a roll off, which is again, as you can see, kind of similar to the Fletcher Munson curve. And again, if you were to play the track with this reference in line, we can see that all the frequencies of my mix should roughly dance around this. take that additional high-end EQ off that I put on before, we'll see it lines up even more so with it. So if at a glance you were to use a reference like the pink noise reference we have here, then we were to perhaps spot something like this happening, where our high end's consistently falling below on the pink noise. with a very quick judgment know that that's the issue that's going on in your mix and why it's misbalanced. There you go, that should really help you in balancing out your mix. Now there's more advanced tools out there too, like Ozone's Tonal Balance. To aid in this type of mixing, well what you should do is watch this video next to learn an essential EQ skill for modern electronic music. I'll see you guys in that one.